Hey all, my name's Justin. I'm the owner of Portland CNC, also Nax Studio. Thought I'd introduce myself and try to tell you a little bit about what we want to do with the YouTube channel. So I went to design school and I learned a ton there, mostly about architecture, but I also fell in love with a CNC router in a back room. Um, and years down the road, I'm trying to design products of my own um, and couldn't really find anybody to help make stuff that like I wanted to have it made. Um, it was just a problem, a lot of shops weren't interested and um, ended up buying a CNC machine myself. Um, it's a four by eight CNC router from ShopSaver. And uh, we turned that into a, a service for people around here. Over the years, I've learned a lot from people on YouTube like John Saunders of NYCNC and thought to myself, I wish somebody else would do a, a version of this for the wood routing people like myself. Um, and there just really hasn't been a whole lot out there. So here it is, this is what we hope to be is uh, any what half as good as what John and, and crew have done over there with their, their channel. We hope to share projects, tips and tricks similar to them, uh, specific to wood routing, some plastics, other materials. Uh, we're gonna put a focus on like design all the way through hopefully um, fabrication of things. Um, and a lot of that will be infusion from sculpting to cam to uh, actually running the machine, feeds and speeds, and anything else that you're interested in. So definitely let us know. Um, today we have a, a clamp rack. It's, it's a common problem. Everybody has clamps and there's not a good place to put them. Um, and so we did a little design infusion, did some simulation testing to remove some mass. So we're gonna take you through that and then actually cutting the parts, putting it together and hopefully it works. So definitely come along with us. We, we would love to have you. Um, let us know what you think, and we will uh, get going here. We're going to start off with a sketch. We've already drawn some of this, so we're just going to follow along with what we've already made. Pretty much we're looking for like a 12 to 13 inch uh, triangle that's 45 degrees. One notable little piece is this little nub in the front that keeps our clamps from sliding off. Now time to extrude the sketch. We're using 7 tenths of an inch for the ply thickness. We brought in a Bessie K clamp here for scale and sizing. Let's open up the simulation tab. We've already done the simulation, but you would go study new simulation and choose shape optimization here. You want to choose constraints and then structural constraints. Um, you want to select the back face here and choose fixed. Let's go up to loads and you want to make sure gravity is toggled on and then we'll select structural loads. Essentially we're going to apply a force to the top face here. You can fit seven K clamps on the top of this thing and the heaviest of them is about 14 pounds so that's roughly 100 pounds of weight. Even though we're using plywood here the simulation doesn't like it and wants you to use something like MDF which is, seems to understand better. Other than that, we're pretty much ready to go. So you're gonna to go to solve up here. It says ready to go, so we can solve it using the cloud. So here's what you get back. So what you're seeing in red is the load path criticality results, and that's where we want structure to be more or less. Next, we wanna go up to results and promote, and then choose model workspace and that essentially takes that model and puts it into the model workspace so then we can trace it with a sketch. So first we want to get our old outline so we're going to go to project and click on the center of that piece so we get the outline onto our new sketch. We're going to trace out our simulation body on our sketch. We want to make sure and hit all the critical load paths that they've shown us in the simulation. Uh, and then add a couple of others at the bottom here that just seem sensible. So we're going to jump into the one that we made and we just extruded that out to 0.7 again. All right, let's change the color here so we can tell what's going on. Choose a green plastic. And we're going to do a create pattern, rectangular pattern. We want to select bodies. We want this object. We want to choose a direction. Choose the green axis. We want to go by spacing. We want two of these at 2.1 inches, and that'll get us right around the uh, structure there of the column, or the clamp, sorry. Only want one in this direction. So there's that. 
I'll just do the same thing again, create a new pattern. Select both of them this time, with directions being the same axis, spacing, we want six items, 6.5 inches apart. So there is all our brace arms. Here we're gonna draw a sketch, which is pretty much just the backing of the piece. Turn off all these bodies, you can see it a little better in the clamp. We also draw in our dado. So we screwed that body in the back. Then all we have to do from here is combine. So we're separating out, we're doing a Boolean essentially with modify, combine. And you select your target body, which is the thing to modify. And then tool bodies, which is all of our different arms here. We want it to cut and this is what we result in. If we turn off all these, you can see what we've cut out here. And instead of worrying about tolerance, uh, material tolerance within the model, um, we just made our ply 0.7. And don't worry about how those fit into the datos now. We'll worry about those when we get to stock to leave in, in CAM and deal with kind of an offset of tolerance there that, that works really well. Here's how we've taken the model, kind of extended it um, down a little bit so we could fit it into our um, shop's French cleat setup, which is 12 inches apart. Um, so it's just a little bit longer than what we saw before. So anyway, we took this uh, into F Rhino and did some nesting, which you could do in Fusion too, but it's just quicker in Rhino. Uh, maybe someday we'll make a video about how that works kind of leveled it out, made it all fit. And we also ended up making this little jig that holds together the pieces, which you'll see in the video. It um, goes across the top here. Set up our sheet or our stock. So if you do that with a new setup, uh, we already have it set up. We're gonna run through what we had. Um, we had a stock piece that was 48 by 5, 58 and three quarters. So we use that as our stock. But essentially what this big gray blob is, is uh, a nice squared off piece of drop from the machine so that we don't have some weird jackety edge or we don't have to get out a saw of our own and cut it on the table. So it's just a good way to manage your drop um, so that it's an even piece that you can reuse. Um, anyway, uh, we measured that to 0.7 roughly. Uh, we set the Z0 to the bottom of the stock or to the top of the sacrificial service. And we always like to note that in our program comment. So it just helps you at the machine. Um, otherwise, we select all our bodies, and for some reason two of those aren't selected, which is kind of funny because we've already run this. And then, yeah, box point, we've selected down there for the model. So next, we'll do the dados. Um, remember we talked about how we didn't already set up a tolerance, so we needed to uh, measure with a caliper, and we measured that out to about 0.7. So since we have a perfect tight fit, that's not really advised because um, your wood varies a lot. So what we do is then um, add in some stock to leave, which is what we did right here. So let's go back to the beginning here. We selected a 1350 Vortex down cutter. That is a two flute down cutter. It's good for uh, doing datos. Um, we run it at 17,000 RPMs, pretty okay pace, 310 inches a minute. Um, We've selected all of our chains, which is effectively just clicking each of these. Oop, not that one. And then we want to make sure our heights are at selected contour, which is down there. Um, roughing step downs, we don't really want to go all at it. Uh, we don't really, we're not in a rush, so let's do this at quarter inch step downs. Uh, maximum stepped over is, we'd like to do about 60%. Um, so half inch tool, 60% of that is 0.3. We want to mill that conventional so that we get a nice finish edge. Um, and then here's the stock to leave we were talking about. So instead of kind of measuring and modeling it to have tolerances, which is cumbersome and makes for messy models, we like to um, use stock to leave. So it's essentially saying at the edge here, go out 
seven thousandths of an inch on each side and that gives us a really nice fit of our dados um, you can kind of play with that sometimes we'll leave it uh, tight and then cut a scrap piece on the machine uh, pull it off see if it fits and since you're always dealing with different material thicknesses, sometimes you need better tolerances. We knew this would fit pretty well, something we do all the time, and this is just for a shop use. So that's pretty much all we did here. I like to kind of turn off some of the lead-ins, lead-outs. Those get to be a problem sometimes when you're running into other pieces. So that's what that looks like. A couple passes, two minutes. Uh, next would be drilling. Back here, we use a 1 8 inch high-speed drill. We sped this up a little bit, 40 is pretty slow. Um, we like to use this diameter range, so we know that most of these are already an eighth of an inch, so you could make them exactly an eighth. And then make sure your height's a big problem here is the dados. You don't want to start at the whole top, or otherwise you're going to break a tip. Um, a little spoiler, you'll see we did break one tool doing this, because um, we didn't change this. It should be model top that way you're starting from higher up and you're not pulling out and not getting out before you hit the edge of the dado which is what we did uh, then we like to go a little bit below this is a little far but it doesn't really matter just something below um, we're not doing too deep of a cut so drilling rapids fine so it's already found all of our holes for us which is nice we don't have to go through and select them uh, we start with this jig and just machine that out. Don't have a lot of suction, um, but it's just a quick jig, so it doesn't really matter. And then we did the French cleats. We didn't actually cut the cleat 45, but we just cut them out and then threw that on the table saw, which is a quick way to do that and doesn't take a lot of machining time. Um, those are just contour cuts. So same process. We use a quarter inch vortex compression which is it's a 3110. It's a really nice tool. Run that at 18,000 RPMs on our five horsepower HSD spindle, 330 inches a minute. And again, we're not in a hurry, so we like to get a nice cut and not have things move. Uh, you can take that all the way up to 500 inches a minute if you have the right spindle. And we've selected those pieces. Uh, heights, we like to go a little bit below bottom, five thousandths can be even 10, 10 thousandths, it's not a big deal. You wanna get into the spoil board just a little bit so you get a nice bottom finish. You don't wanna be shy, that's an annoying little problem to fix. Yeah, other than that, not too much to do here. Make sure it's on right conventional for most plywoods. Uh, we ramp, that's a little, little low, probably more like a 25, gets you down in the material faster. Um, Something we didn't do, but you might want to do, is change your entry position so that you're running first with the grain, which is running left and right on the screen here. Um, we didn't do that on all these pockets, so you'll see there's a little bit of tear out. Not a big deal, it sanded off. And again, this is just a shop project. For a client, we'd make sure we're always kind of getting our entry points in the right spots here. Otherwise, you start against the grain, you're gonna get some tear out on top with an up uh, compression cutter. So essentially what we did with the rest of this is since our vacuum works in long rectangles, if you're staring down the machine like this, left to right, we cut them like that so that we can shut off a vacuum. If Since there's so much open space here, we might lose enough vacuum. We end up not having enough to hold down pieces. So if you kind of shut them off after you've gone past, we do the insides first. Same cutting process, the 3110. We like to do all the insides of those pieces. And then we did the outsides. Same process, we shut off the first vacuum sometimes if, if we need that, then we're into the second, same process, third. And that's really all of our cam. Um, it's split out more than normal just because we want to make sure those didn't move since there's so much cutout space. But yeah, that's pretty much it. From there, we end up just posting mostly by folders. So we'll post this, mm, yeah, it's not happy. Uh, clamp rack, we usually get a bit of name like one, so we know that's the first part. Um, we post that. Post this as two. You get the picture. Sometimes we'll name, name it two so that we know, oh, this is going to be the drilling portion. Um, know what to expect that way. But the other thing to do, I don't have all these, these uh, generated right now, but we really believe in simulating um, 
a lot just to make sure you know what's going to happen. And even the person running the machine typically will post this at the machine um, so that you know exactly what's going to happen once you get there. And just a good foolproof way since uh, WinCNC isn't exactly a great preview, which is the controller on the Shop Saber. All right, we are ready to head off to the machine and start cutting. If you have problems with suction, uh, like our MDF here is pretty curled from the humidity, you can use blue tape and seal the edges down to the table and it really makes a big difference. Here we go, we're gonna go back to the tool changer and get the 1350, which is a half inch two flute down cutter, which is great for dados because it cuts that top edge really nice and clean, or it's supposed to, a little bit of a teaser. So we're gonna leave the dust boot off here. It's a little uh, easier to see what's going on, but not normal for us. It makes a huge uh, mess, but that's all right. Otherwise, we're not really going to get to see what's going on. We weren't really happy with how these datas came out. Usually, we don't get any fuzz on our down cutters, the 1350, the 1330. Uh, we're getting a little bit here. I think the tool is just old. It's just something you got to deal with. It's easy to sand that off. There wasn't really any bad chip out. Into the dados, we're going to go ahead and get the 8th inch high speed seal drill and drill out all our pre drilled holes for the arm pieces. Time for some profile cutting. This is the Vortex 3110, the compression cutter. You can see how we started in the front and moved to the back. So the whole point of taking out some of the mass in the middle was to reduce some of the weight and uh, we ended up with 6.9 pounds of waste stock inside. We aren't talking about a ton of weight, but it is 40% of the overall weight, which is not negligible and definitely worth doing. Plus, I think it looks better. A quick sanding with 120 get. This is just a shop project after all. No finish and uh, we'll get into the glue up here shortly. I'm using type on one here and a whole lot of one and a quarter inch screws from the back. Overall, I was pretty happy with how this turned out. It's a pretty simple little project and uh, while we don't have a ton of clamps, we definitely have a ton of space for clamps now. We hope you enjoyed this project. Maybe it gives you some ideas for clamp racks of your own or just how to use Fusion better. But regardless, uh, we'd love to hear your feedback. Let us know in the comments. And more than anything, thanks for watching.